Previously on X Men. My advice is to focus on having fun and talk about the kind of stuff that you like. So, I like comic books, and if you hadn't already noticed from my fancy hat and jacket, I'm also quite the fan of communism. But what exactly is inside of the overlap area on that Venn diagram? There must be some comics out there for dirty communists like me, and it. So, a quick check-in with our Silicon Valley overlords and guardians of the Hall of Records show that the top Google image search result for communist comic books is this 1950s entry, Is This tomorrow america under communism and you know it must be great if it's ranked the number one search result on the world's biggest search engine run by technocrats with unfathomable levels of political power and annual turnovers comparable to small african nations well not chad quick uh, side note on chad stop copying romania and get a new flag so you'll notice on the cover that this guy is wearing the same jacket as me and that's cool now i understand how fans of superboy and america chavez must feel like i totally identify with this guy now i feel so represented and as you can see these people are clearly fighting for control over the phoenix force i'm excited i'm looking forward to reading this book is this tomorrow? It wasn't long after the end of the Second World War that the communist forces in America seized their chance. The story is sad, the end tragic, but this is the way it began. Alright, bit melodramatic of an opening. Oh I see, look here on the inside cover. Is This Tomorrow is being distributed by the Cathetical Guild Education Society, the propaganda wing of the blood-drinking, fleshy in witch-burning Catholic Church. Yet another shadowy organisation built on the oppression of workers with a fortune of over $15 billion of stolen treasure and artefacts, coordinating with the separation of church and state in a conspiracy to discredit communism. The Catholic Church? God, put them on the list. How exactly do the communists come to power? What's the sequence of events that leads to the American people seeing the light? I've got my notepad ready, hit me. What is the first step towards the glorious revolution? Cause a drought. Unless the Soviets had access to harp technology in the 1950s, that sounds kinda sorta like an act of God to me. Whatever, there's a drought, a plague of locusts, pestilence, and eventually starvation. So far, this all checks out. There's a food shortage and the capitalists aren't able to meet the demand. And then in steps this guy, leader of the communists, Jones. His beard and his glasses are clearly supposed to invoke the image of Lenin in your mind, but to me, this guy seems way more bioengineer, six-legged, beakless, chicken, capitalist icon, Colonel Sanders. So this Kentucky-looking motherfucker comes in and is like, this country will be communist in a year. Our plan has two simple steps. First, touch off a crisis, and then take advantage of the highly unlikely act of God-level drought and seize control of the food supply. Which makes sense because whoever controls the food distribution network essentially controls the country. So first of all, start a front to oppose fascism or intolerance or something else that's unpopular and get a few big names to back them. Celebrities, public speakers, senators, everyone. Pull whatever strings you have in the media to spread the message that we're cracking down on intolerance. Then you get your boys to infiltrate various groups and subtly spread division amongst the ranks. Next you take control of the union so that any given moment we can paralyze industry and shut down the economy. But how do we take over unions? Do we use bribery tactics? Blackmail? Well, don't worry, it's far easier than that. All you have to do is drag out union meetings so long that everybody else goes home and only us communists remain to vote on the proceedings. Kind of like a filibuster where a senator is able to delay or kill motions in the Senate on often life-changing bills by just constantly fucking talking until everyone else gives up and goes home. I've never understood why Americans are so anti-union, but... 
After reading Is This Tomorrow, it's become clear to me that some kind of fuckery has been going on behind the scenes to link the idea of normal, hard-working people coming together to demand better working conditions with those evil, nasty communists. Side note here, a lot of people on Twitter are quick to share with me anti-communist quotes from comic book legend Jack Kirby about how he'd like to punch communists in the face or whatever. I very rarely see people cite this quote from Kirby on unions admitting that as a younger man he too had fallen for the Red Scare. Tell workers in the factories that the food shortages are caused by the greed of farmers in some bumfuck Alabama nowhere. Tell middle America, your basket of deplorables if you will, that the problems that they are facing are caused by ordinary workers on the coast, demanding fairer pay and better conditions, and rather than solving any of these problems, like, you know, paying people a decent living wage for their services to society, whether that's working in a factory building weapons for the military industrial complex, or being a barista at Starbucks flipping burgers at McDonald's, pay people enough to live on for fuck's sake. But nah, don't take advantage of our position in the government to argue for better. Let's just let these two camps fight each other. As long as their attention is focused on each other, nobody will notice that we, the political class, have teamed up with the evil mega corporations to double team the American people. But that's not enough. Turning the working classes and different religious groups against each other is only the beginning. Use the media to sp- a division between people with different melanin counts in their skin. Get everyone to fight each other. Look here, this woman even has your trademark SJW pink hair. And keep going, don't stop. Eventually the temperature in the mixing bowl will reach a critical level and the crucible will explode with the protesters and rioters pouring out into the streets to demand change by smashing up stores and stealing those new pair of trainers that marketing companies convince them will give them some sort of status in society and bring an end to the inadequacies they feel in their life. Just stuff that empty hole in your soul with consumerist trinkets, comrade. Don't worry yourself about the betterment or self-improvement to heal that hole. Don't fill it with knowledge or love or the love of knowledge. Fill it with Big Macs and fancy black mirrors. As long as your systems have trained the people not to look inwards to explore why their lives feel so meaningless and empty, but to blame others for their problems, or that some fallen angel with a fiery hate boner for God is responsible for their actions, and tensions will continue to rise as everybody looks for some exterior person or group to blame the ills on. It will continue to escalate until people turn on the very police themselves. Then, when tensions are at their highest, throw a literal grenade into the mix and assassinate the president and vice president. The speaker of the house will declare, the only solution is to declare an unlimited emergency and give me extraordinary powers. By this point, you don't need your useless and overpriced college education political science degree to tell you that this book is ever so slightly biased, that the Cathetical Guild haven't exactly been showing our comrades in the best light. I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind while I show you these next pages. So the speaker enacts emergency measures to end the food shortages, with people starving to death after the drought and with all the confusion we've caused with the unions and the farmers. The speaker ushers collectivized farming into existence. Farmers grow the food, workers pack the food and the government controls the fair and equal distribution of food. And guess what? Even in this piece of shit, anti-communist propaganda rag of a comic book, it works. In spite of the drought, there is still too much food. It turns out that if you can find a way to prevent corporations who'd rather waste some 90% of food produce by chucking it in the trash instead of into poor people's bellies, that there's more than enough food to go around even after a massive biblical level drought that caused this entire situation in the first place. The book carries on for another 20 pages or so showing what the communists will do from this position now that they've developed some actual political power. And as you would expect from an anti-communist comic book like this one, it's not exactly the sunshine and rainbows utopia that I'd build in my own communist society. 
And as the master of my own propaganda network here, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm electing not to show you the rest of the book because it's vile, trash and unrepresentative of my views. And unlike the Chinese government though, I do acknowledge that it does indeed exist. And if you want to redistribute your capitalist dollars to Jeff Bezos and grab yourself a copy off of Amazon for fifteen ninety nine, be my guest. Personally, though, I'd rather point you in the direction of this free PDF copy available on archive.org, the very same archive.org that brings us the Wayback Machine for digging up old deleted tweets and blog entries and shit like that. A powerful tool in the right hands. What I found truly interesting about this book was the first half, the how do we get power section. The second half, the literal what are some of the worst things we can think of section I couldn't give a shit about. As a comic book for its storytelling quality, for its character arcs and plot development, it's a big bag of wank. But as an instruction manual for how to take over the political establishment, pretty interesting. I give this book three hammers and sickles out of five.